What's up, party people? Hope you're having a wonderful Tuesday. I'm Chris with Photo, and this is an episode of our live lighting hangout session, essentially, where we talk about cool tips and tricks called Geared Up. And again, we're gonna be breaking down lighting setups. We're gonna be answering any questions that you may have about what we're talking about, or if you have any other you know, little lighting things that we can address at the time. You can drop a, your uh, question in the comment section. If you're watching this on profoto.com, you'll probably see some graphics fly up around the edges of the screen. You can click on those bad boys if you want some more information on anything that we're talking about today as far as like the umbrellas and the B10s or something like that. The cool thing too, if you're watching this on Profoto, is that Whenever you do click on something, we don't go anywhere. We just kind of become a little picture in picture. So if you want that experience, you want to watch that on profoto.com, by all means, click on the link in the, uh, I think it's in the description on YouTube and Facebook. If not, just watch us on Facebook and let's hang out there. Oh, Kate's monitoring Facebook. I'm on YouTube in case y'all have any questions there as well. So let's dive into what it is that we're talking about today. What's on the docket? How to light that thing, a white background. It's one of those things that's really good to know just if you're looking to get something really clean, like uh, maybe you're in the headshot game and you want a, a nice clean white backdrop, maybe you're going for that, that Hurley style, this is gonna help you learn how to light that white backdrop. Maybe you're just looking for something a little more high key, something fresh, something really, really minimal, a white backdrop is a really, really cool thing to know how to light. It's something that you can utilize really well. The nice thing about white too is if you don't actually throw a light on it, you can make it go gray. And depending on how you position your subject uh, in uh, reference to your actual light itself, you can actually make it go even darker than that, which is kind of cool. So lighting's fun. This is fun stuff. And we're gonna talk about how you do that. So let's dive into it. So. I have some umbrellas set up there right now on my um, B10s. I'm gonna take those off here for a second because I want to talk about the differences between using a, uh, a bare head flash or going into an umbrella. So let's talk about that first. Let's take the umbrellas off. Cool. Oh yeah. Go to that wide shot. You have my face all up in it. Oh, I switched it. No, yeah. So the cool thing, oh, look at me. Just leaving drawers open. So. When it comes to using a, a bare head flash, and I know I'm all the way over here, I just don't feel like taking this thing off the light stand right now. But when it comes to using a bare head flash, this works really well with like some caveats. The only thing that you kind of want to pay attention to is throwing a bare head really at anything can cause a hot spot, right? So, and that's no different with shooting at the background. You can mitigate some of that by backing the light up a little bit. Um, which I've done here, I'm probably, I'm, I'm kind of aiming right towards the middle of my frame with the light to, um, to get it to where I want. That's probably six, seven feet away. And it's the same way with the B10 on the other side. Again, the downside is you're, it's gonna be a little bit hotter here. I'm try to get out of the way of the flags. It's gonna be a little bit hotter here than it is around the outsides. And I, I'm gonna show you that here in just a moment too. Um, I might be shooting tight enough that we get away with, um, any type of like hot spot falling off, but I may not. And you'll we'll also be able to see that with a light meter. There are some, depending on the head that you're using, there are some other things that you can use to, um, to get a, a big widespread, something a lot more even. Something that we've talked about in the past, the uh, wide zoom reflector is a really, really cool option if you're using a pro head or some one of our pro photo flashes with an exposed dome, like an acute head or something like that. The wide zoom is really, really good because it's, it's made to take all that light like we've talked about in the past and uh, kind of, it, it's a little specular, but it's a really, it's a really, it's really good at evening out the light. I'm kind of at a loss for words with it, but it's really, really good at keeping the light relatively even and it can throw it pretty wide. When you're using a flat front, you don't necessarily have those options. So the beautiful thing about like the B10s and the B1Xs is they have a built-in reflector inside of them where they keep the light spread nicely enough, but the downside for any bare head straight on is again, the, the chance of a hot spot. And we're gonna do that with a meter here in just a second. I'm actually gonna go ahead and take this umbrella off as well. Cool. I, I'm trying to hide from everybody. Yeah, hidden by a flag. So, and the reason that you might wanna use something like an umbrella, and we're just gonna talk uh, about the reasons that you want to do this stuff and then we'll get into the demo itself. So the reasons that you might want to use an umbrella are pretty simple. Uh, the nice thing about the umbrella, I don't think we've talked about the inverse square law too much on this thing, but it, in its basic form, the inverse square law is the, the farther the light has to travel, the 
slower it starts to, to go dark. So the, it's, the photons start to spread out a lot wider and the light gets a lot more even. So when you're shooting into an umbrella one, you are lengthening that shot because the light has to go into the umbrella and then back out, which is kind of cool. But you're also hitting this big, huge light source, making the light source a lot larger. And then it's throwing the photons out way wider. So you're getting a lot smoother coverage and no chance of a hot spot because you're not shooting a light directly into the background. So that's one of the upsides for using something like an umbrella. So that's why we're gonna be demoing it with an umbrella and whatnot. So let's talk about some tips for getting the background the way that you want. So I know for my exposure today, I try to always stay at like F8 in here, uh, ISO 160 and 250th of a second. And that's just so I can combat the fact that I have video lights on. I don't want these lights infiltrating the shot and kind of skewing what our light actually looks like. So I know that I'm shooting F8 on my camera. So if I know I'm shooting F8 on my camera, I want to try, I know that I'm gonna have to get my subject with my light meter at f8 right so when you're shooting a white background you want your subject to be about a stop to a stop and a half less bright than the background so if i'm shooting kate here in just a, a couple of moments right here and i know the light hitting her is f8 the background needs to be f11 that's double the power that's one stop up and depending on what you're trying to achieve, you might be able to go up a little bit more stop, stop and a half. But the danger in going too bright, and I'll show you this as well, is you can start to get flare. Essentially what you're doing is you're gonna pummel that background with so much light that it becomes a light source. And then that light source now is pointing right at you, right at your camera. So one, you're gonna see a contrast drop. You'll get some, you can get some fringing around the hair. Um, it just, it gets, um, you get some really nasty highlights that you may not necessarily be wanting to get in the shot. So it's one of those things you have to kind of walk that line of not going too hard because yes, you can pump the power way, way up and the background is technically white, but so is everything else that you may not want to be blown out. So that's one of those things you have to pay attention to right there. We're gonna also, another good tip for lighting a white background is using a V-flat or some sort of a flagging device. Coincidentally enough, I'm using a flag. Um, but some sort of a flagging device to make sure the extra light that could be spilling from the edges of your light source um, aren't affecting your subject. You're not getting any extra light, uh, any stray light beams from the two background lights on your subject. There is going to be a little bit, depending on how um, powerful you make that background light. Again, this kind of goes back to the whole flaring idea. But there is going to be a little bit of light that comes back forward. There might be a touch of a highlight uh, somewhere on like the the edge of the body or something like that. It may be there, it may be not. It just depends on how fine you walk that line. Um, trying to think. I'm, I've got my notes here to make sure that I'm not forgetting um, anything because I'm trying to make sure I'm a little more meticulous. I wanna make sure that you're getting all the information that you need on this stuff. So we talked about the fringing. So you can do this. The cool thing is you can do this with a light meter. A light meter is preferable uh, just because you know that you're getting your shot pretty clean edge to edge. You could, in theory, do this with TTL. Um, you just have to kind of, again, know what you're trying to achieve. So. TTL is trying to make the scene 18% gray. The cool thing about shooting that background right there is that it is a blank white background. So the TTL is gonna to try to shoot it gray and we're going to do this as well as use the light meter. So you can use your flash exposure compensation inside your camera to bring that up about a stop to a stop to two stops, somewhere in that stop to two stop range and get a nice white background with that technique if you don't want to mess around with a light meter uh, and you can if you're using something like i'm using i have capture one right here uh you can actually use the dropper tool or you can use the tool and and see what the light is and if it's all 255 or close to 255 to where you're not losing all that information uh depending on how you like to shoot some people don't necessarily want that extra information that's in the white background some people do so you might want to shoot a little bit lower than that so we'll do that with ttl and then we're going to bust out the light meter and have some fun with that as well so that being said let's do it i don't need you to just say kate i'm gonna i'm gonna do the the background tester hey everybody what's up party people i see you i see you i see you Cool. Yeah. 
Paul says, I've been trying to light a full length white background for years, hence the white hair. <laughs> <laughs> My children give me the white and gray hair. Yeah, that's I, true. Yeah. They're uh, wonderful. They're magical. Can you pull the paper out so we can see the full body? Uh, I can. Uh, I mean, I can. I can roll it. I just, the studio is not really set up to do that. Let's just kind of let's start with where we are, and if we have a little bit of time, I'll roll it out some more. Just there's a lot of light stands all over the place, so it's not uh, one of those things. that's like if it was just like a, yeah. yeah, if it was like a one light setup, that it's a little bit easier. But I, I've got a ton of crap rolling around here today. We'll see what we can do though. Um, so I'm gonna flip over to TTL on my trigger. Aim it. No, not yet. Okay. Aim it at the background, take a shot. Boom, cool. 18% gray. Uh, I think one of my lights is probably aimed in a little bit more than the other one. I need to kind of make sure it's right where it needs to be pointed to kind of to the center. All right, so let's take this shot. One, two, three. So there it is, pretty much 18% gray, right? And you can take like your dropper tool. Hold on, I need to give these people the image. Oh, gotcha. So you can see just a TTL shot of the background is a pretty gray shot, right? The cool thing is, is we can stay in the TTL world if you want to, again, if you don't have a light meter or if you don't want to use one, maybe it's just too much stuff to bring with you. And I'm gonna go into my camera and I'm gonna flash expose compensate up, let's say a stop in two thirds. That sounds good to me. Let's just see what happens. And take the shot, boom, you can see the background went much brighter. And then we put the dropper tool over there where two, two, three, one, two, two, eight, that's, that's probably enough for a lot of people. Um, again, if you don't wanna lose the information in your shot, that would, that, I could pull that back and I could still see information in that shot. If you don't care, you could power, I mean, we could go up two stops. Um, Carl is asking, what's your light meter? And do you have any recommendations for good ones? So Sekonic makes the best. Um, I have a, I have the L858DU. It's like a, it's a lot of, it's all touch screeny and it, you know, futuristic looking spacey. It's a great light meter. Um, you can pretty much do anything with it. So it does, it like tests high speed sync and all kinds of other good stuff. So that's the Sekonic L858D hyphen U for you. Uh, that's the one that I use um, I've used other ones in the past. It's just the one that I have. I, I got it because it could do high speed sync metering and stuff like that as well. So, um, cool. So we were able to get there. So if I go back over here and I take it up the two stops that I said I wanted to, and this is just fun kind of futzing around for just a second, but you can get a pretty white background just by going with your TTL shot and bring it up. I would say, you know, at two stops, it has me right on the brink of of white, I'm just under 255 all over the shot. You can see on my screen up around here, uh, whenever I'm going over the, th the image, you can see the numbers, 255 is pure white. So we're up there. So we're, we still have information in the shot, which is dope. So it's recoverable if you wanted it. Um, and the chances of it flaring are gonna be pretty, pretty low. So let's... You okay? Yes, I just realized I'm a, I'm a dummy. Let me, let me, this shouldn't have affected it, but I'm just gonna look at something. Yeah, three, two, one, pop. Sorry, I just wanted to, sometimes I uh, forget that I, yeah, I had, I had a feeling it didn't affect it, but I left my main light on, so I just wanted to make sure they were in good business. All right, now let's throw Kate in here. Actually, before we do that, let's, let's do, let's take a light meter test. Let me flip this thing out of, TTL mode. So if I take my light meter now, uh, I'm going with incident. That means uh, the dome is facing the light um, and the dome is retracted in for the measurement. I'm gonna go right here in the middle, try not to buy myself. Oh, I gotta click the button. So we're at 5.6, we're a little under F8. So we were, we were able to get, you know, in the ballpark, which is nice. And so if we want to go to the true, like I said, I know I'm photographing Kate at F8. If we want to go to that true um, one stop over for uh, the background as opposed to our subject, I know that I can go from here. Let's, I'm gonna turn off uh, group A, hit the master, and I'm gonna power up one, two, and a stop. Thank you. 
a lot of people are always talking about how they want the uh, trigger inside the uh, inside the Sekonic meter to click it and then so they would fire the lights. I like this method a little bit better uh, because I can click with one hand and I can make the adjustments really, really quickly without having to go around in my lights, which is cool. So that's how I roll. Um, but yeah, so now that background is is the F11. Let's do a quick comparison. Oh, wait, hold on, I'm sorry. I need to pull that up so everybody can see. It's all good. Oh, it's back in my head. That's wonderful. Cool. So here's the here's that F11 exposure. So you see, pretty similar, but if I roll around the uh, the shot with my thing, you can see at the top everything is pegged at 255. That is pure white all the way around. Um, and so cool. Let's bring Kate in now. Oh, we did have a question though. Hold oh, on. Hold what's on. up? Um, let's see. What is the brand of the ball head on your tripod? Tripod, excuse me. What the ball head on my tripod? Like this thing right here that... I think this person... Oh, oh, this one, agents. this one. It's an Arca Swiss P0, I believe. Arca Smith. Okay. Arca Smith. No, not Arca Smith. Arca Swiss, like the cheese. Oh, okay. Let's see. Like the cheese, P0, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, um. Wow. Yeah, Arca Swiss cheese. Cool, so let's bring Kate in here. And so for the main light for this, we're gonna be using a uh, Profoto uh, Deep Silver Small. I wanted something a little more punchy, uh, but still relatively soft. The four by six I have behind it as a little bit of extra fill just in case I need it. I'm not 100% sure that I'm gonna need it uh, after kind of playing around with my light a little bit earlier. I kind of like this look a little bit better. So uh, I may not even turn that uh, four points, uh, the four by six on. You ready to rock and roll, Kate? Yeah, I'm ready. Is let's this do it. What you want right there for shooting? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Cool. Let's get that on. For a second, I thought they were talking about my sweet iPad laptop setup. I, know, I, I don't know what words came out of my mouth. Yeah, I was like, what's what's going on here? So let me try to back this up a skosh. So okay, so Caitlin's hidden by the flags. That's okay, but Hi. she's here. Don't worry. <laughs> And again, we have her back behind the flag just because um, we want to ensure that, um, let's make sure. The other thing that we need to remember from the talk that we had a couple of weeks ago about uh, silver umbrellas is that they're very pointed. And so we want to make sure that it is pointed at our subject. You ready to hop in there? It's like aiming this. Aiming down? Okay, cool. Maybe I need to boost it up just a skosh. So let's go. Does that feel better? Talk to me. There. Cool. The tough, well, again, the tough thing about a silver umbrella is it just, it's very, very directional. It's, even though it's nice and soft, it's very directional. Let's go here, TTL shot, we're at 5.6. Let's bring that energy up. Let's stop. F8, cool. So, ready to rock, Kate? Let's do this. Here we go. Three, two, one. That feels like a lot more light than there should be. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see the background is starting to not flare too much, but, you, oh, <laughs> I, used, <laughs> I clicked my eyedropper tool. Um, you can see that some of the edges of the hair are starting to, to go out. They're starting to, it, it's getting a little intense. It's still 255, but I think the background's honestly too bright. Let's bring, I wanna do one thing. Let's, I'm gonna kill the background really fast. I, uh, here we go. Three, two, one. Cool, the main looks wonderful. It might be, I think it's pointed at your hand. It looks like it. It's still pointed to yeah. me now. So this is what I was talking about where you you kind of have to pay attention to where the lights So here, let me just kind of put myself. Yeah, so I'm gonna just bring this up a skosh more. Again, with the, the silver umbrella, it's so pointed that you just- There kinda, it is, yeah. I feel it now. Yeah, it's yeah. so pointed that you have to just be super careful. So now I feel like, yeah, so that was what was going on. I had the umbrella pointed the wrong way and so we were metering off the, um, we were metering off the edge of the light and not the actual beam. So that's why I got a little over. So let's go down here, pop this, let's see. This is the fun stuff, always the little technical things, but it's kind of fun to mess with it. 
perfect. So here we go, let's take the shot without it. Again, without the light, there it goes, without the light aimed at Kate's hand. So that looks wonderful, beautiful light source. And now we can bring back in our background lights. Here we go, ready? Three, two, one. And that looks way better. The background's probably still flaring a little bit more than I want to. A lot of this is probably due to the fact that, pardon me, Kate, it's probably due to the fact that there's a hot spot right here um, just because the lights are coming in super hard and it's not gonna give as much coverage there, but it's gonna hit with a hot spot right there. So that's why if you can actually see the shot, it looks a little brighter here in the midsection than up around here. It looks like it's starting to kind of fade out a touch. It's definitely flaring a little bit lower. So we wanna bring that back. So again, this is one of those things where we kinda of just play around with it. But this is probably reading F11. I just really don't wanna blind myself. Yeah, it's still reading F11, which is good. I still think that hot spot's not really helping us too much. So let's see if we can even that out with a couple of deep or shallow umbrellas. So the umbrellas are cool again because they're indirect, right? So the light is bouncing into the umbrella and back out. It's gonna lengthen the light. It's gonna make it a lot more even, which is really, really cool. It's one of those things we want. We're going with a white umbrella as opposed to a silver umbrella. And that is because the silver umbrellas, just like we were talking about with the uh, deep silver that's right there, it is a touch more pointed than uh, you're gonna get out of the shallow because the shallow throws the light a lot wider. Uh, and then the, and then the, sorry, I was talking about silver and I started talking, I went into shallow. So the silver is a little more pointed. The white is a little more widespread, a little more natural. So we're going with the white. Ready, Almost, I gotta throw this other umbrella on there. I also am gonna lose a little bit of light, probably close to a stop by doing all this extra bouncing. Um, honestly, we're a little overexposed on the shot in the first place. But uh, we're gonna kind of see where we, I think, honestly, we're not probably too far off of where we need to be. So, you wanna hop in there, Kate? Yes, sorry, I was trying to see about a question. Cool, we can, we'll, we'll check on your questions in just a second. Here we go. Let's go, let's just go here so they can see it. Cool, here we go. Three, two, one. So the background evened out a whole lot more with the um, the umbrellas. You can see there's not as much of a hot spot. We're still two by five all the way around the edges. So we are clearly overexposed uh, with the um, background lights pointed directly at the background, causing some of that flare that I was talking about. So the light started the the photo started to lose some of its contrast. So that's really really cool. Uh, the umbrella smoothed that out a whole lot, and we can even go with the meter and see what the meter says we are if uh, I am, oh, I said it over there. I can't keep up with my stuff. Cool. So, I wanna go here, try not to block anything. Also try not to block, or try not to blind myself. Yeah, so we're right at F8 on the background, um, which I honestly personally like a lot better than going to the F11. A lot of people say go the one stop over. Uh, that's generally the rule uh, with this so far. I'm personally liking the F8 uh, look a little bit more. Yeah, beautiful. Cool. So let's um, not lose my train of thought. So let's take one more shot just so you can kind of see it. We, we're going to pump. Let's pump the light up one stop just so uh, you can we can see how the flaring, oh, come back, come back to me, come back to me. I'm changing my group by accident. There we go. So I wanna bring it up one stop to the kind of the quote unquote rule uh, with this thing. And that way we can see how much the umbrella affects the hot spot. So back in there one more time, Kate. Three, two, one. Cool, it is starting to flare again. It's not uh, as much of a, um, the cool thing is it's not as much of a hot spot as we were getting with the two lights pointed directly at the background. So that's kind of cool. And now let me also take one shot with the lights pointed at the background, just absolutely peg the 10. So you can really see what a nice, beautiful, way overexposed backdrop looks like.
and then we can compare all of this stuff, I can answer some questions. Like my throat is getting dry, <laughs> and all I'm thinking about the entire time is how, how my throat's getting dry. And I'm like, oh, I'm forgetting stuff because my, my throat's dry. Let's see. So we've taken a shot with the lights straight on at the, at the exposure that is deemed correct. One stop over, right? Now, then we did a shot with the umbrellas without changing anything, keeping the, the background uh, metering at F8 and Kate metering at F8. It looked a lot better. It was still 255. I'm look, talking to that <laughs> camera right there and it's over there. Um, keeping the light at uh, where it was, it's still metered 255, so it was still white without flaring. Now we've pointed the lights back at the backdrop and I've turned them up to 10. So these don't go to 11. They're not the Spinal Tap edition, but these should be pretty good. Right back here. Oh, take a tiny little lean, but there we go. I might've actually kicked my camera, but there we go, perfect. Three, two, one. That, my friend, is a way overexposed background. Uh, there's probably a touch more contrast on the uh, shot that you're seeing on the screen right there than what I have, uh, just because the, the switcher makes things a little more contrasty, but there's a ton of flare, and we're gonna talk about that right now. Cool. Ugh. Let's see. Cool, cool, cool. I'm gonna try to, I have like, I tried to outsmart myself and like uh, cable tie the cables better to my um, light stand. And I think my outsmarting myself makes it just harder to move my, my, my little laptop stand around. So let's bring all this stuff up and check it out. So we have a shot here. Let's go full screen. So the shot there we have Perfect, let's go to, I'm gonna just kind of bring them all up. Let's, let's get rid of the flare shot for just a second so we can actually just, oh, stop Siri. Um, so here is our basic shot, no background. So again, the cool thing about a white background is if you don't light it, depending on how your subject and your lighting is placed, it can go gray. So it's a pretty versatile thing to have in a studio is just a roll of white seamless. So very different look just by not having a light on it. Then here, we took the same lights, or we took the B10s, we turned them on, pointed directly at the background. Again, the nice thing about not worrying about umbrellas and just pointing the light at the background is it's simple, right? You're not having to worry about extra modifiers or any of that stuff. But you have to keep in mind that things pointed directly at can cause a hot spot. There is a diffusion plate on the front of the B10s and stuff like that, but they can cause a hot spot. So, you just need to keep that in mind. It may take you backing the lights up a little bit more um, or you just being okay with it. This is probably a touch more powered up than I want, uh, than I necessarily like. There is a little bit of flare coming off. Whereas if we go here to the umbrella shot, right? This is the umbrella shot. I never changed the power from when the light was um, here direct. All I did was turn the light around and put the umbrella inside of it, which goes to show me that I'm also a little overpowered right here because this is still reading 255. And now if you look at the difference between like Kate's arm right here or like her back, there is no extra light kind of creeping around the shot and adding unwanted light onto our subject, right? So that's why you have to really be cautious of like overpowering that background. And it may be one of those things too where you're following the rule, you're one stop over your subject, uh, on the background and you're just not liking the extra light, then bring it back. It's knowing, you have to know the rules to break the rules, right? That's kind of how the photography thing is. It, there's, there are rules that are meant to be broken. So just remember that kind of stuff. And then here with the umbrella, the nice thing about the umbrella is it is gonna keep that light super duper even. And that's because the light's bouncing in and bouncing back out. So it has a little bit longer time to travel to the umbrella and then back out of the umbrella, inverse square law stuff. We'll talk about, we'll get deeper into that on a later date. So, but what that does is lengthens the light, makes the spread even, even more even, a lot more even than it would have been directly. Awesome, so you can see no hot spots, pretty even edge to edge there, whereas with the shot with the light straight on, you can definitely tell that there's way more light here than necessarily up around the top. And then again, even when we went to the shot with the umbrella where we powered it back up to the, um, 
back up to the one stop over the the light on the subject it's still you can you can see the difference between the two let's actually pull this shot away so you can see them together even though it is flaring a little bit there is some extra light on kate that we don't necessarily want it's still more even than the light you were getting with just the lights straight on at the background so something really really cool to think about and then let's just talk about going bananas and you can see the difference between when you really power up there i mean because if you check this out it's still reading 255 on the background but what you've essentially done when you overpower your white background is again you've turned that into a light source now it's actually affecting the shot in negative ways the contrast drop is drastic you can see that in the screen so you want to make sure that you're really careful with how much light you're blasting onto your white seamless. Let's see, I know I have uh, Chuck Kennedy down here says, simple things done exceptionally well, thanks for all your events. Random B10 question, uh, can a firmware update give a numeric value to the LED power color levels uh, for when used as continuous? I mean, I think anything's possible, uh, it just it depends. A lot of the stuff that we do is kind of like, um, a demand issue like the more people are like hey could you please add this feature the more likely it is to come but i can't imagine that it, we have a color display on there right now i can't imagine that we we couldn't do something like that so i'll actually take that and and give it to our r d dudes anything over there uh -huh. lots of shout outs yo 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 Oh, hey everybody happy holidays. happy holidays to everyone as well so i think we've probably, it's a little bit about different ways to set up it seems like one of those things where you're like oh you just throw a light at a white background but it's not as simple as that right so let's just quick break down again what we're talking about so the best case scenario is using two lights with your background because you're if you do one light behind your subject you can kind of get some gradient off to the edge or if you're trying to shoot with one light to the side of your subject, it'll start to gradiate that way. It's much harder to keep even, unless you have some higher ceilings that you could put an umbrella up here above your subject shooting backwards, right? So best practice, two lights, or if your background is even bigger, you might need to add three or more. Uh, but for this, this is a 12 foot seamless, two lights, perfectly fine. So I, you can shoot them directly at the background, like I've done for one of the shots. Again, downside, hot spots, okay? Not as even of a coverage or you can add some umbrellas to them. Downside for umbrellas is it's a little bit more equipment and it takes a little bit more power because you have to bounce the light in and back out of. But the nice thing is, is the light's a lot more even because the spread is much wider, the throw is much longer. So might be something you wanna keep in mind. I personally like the umbrella setup myself. You wanna to try to use some flags or some V-flats to separate your subject from the light to make sure that you're not getting any stray light from the edge of your flash onto your subject. So flags or V-flats are nice. If you have the double-sided V-flats that are like black on one side and white on the inside, those are really, really cool because you can do the, um, the white on the inside with your, um, the white on the inside with your lights, and you can use those as a little bit more of a light source to kind of even that light out some more. Or say you don't have the umbrellas and you just have some V-flats, you could do the same thing. You could take your light and fire it into the V-flat and let it come back out and it's going to give you the same thing and then you know we have a big v flat to help diffuse that light out so a couple of lights on the background flags or v flats to keep the light off of your subject and then try not to overpower your background light again you don't want the flare it's not that good you want to try to stay uh, a stop higher on your background than you are with your um than you are on your subject you can use ttl to get a baseline shot and then flash exposure compensation up uh, one to two stops to kind of get there with uh, your TTL setup if you don't want to use a light meter. So some really cool stuff there. Anything else or are we good to go? It's all good. Cool. Oh, one more thing. Uh, one thing I like to do so the white doesn't bleed on the model is move them further from the background. Marcus Schamberger, that's a great idea. So if you have the space to separate your, uh, your model uh, from, the back, uh, from the backdrop, I don't necessarily have as much room that way just because of all of you guys hanging out right there in the cameras. So, but yes, you could absolutely bring, I could have brought Kate even more forward and that would have kept some of that extra light that's coming back from the background off of her. Again, you can do that by just pulling the power back a little bit. You don't necessarily have to go full 255 pure white. It might be nice to have that information there in case you need to bring it back a little bit, right? So you don't have to 
blow the whole scene out. But even if you got it to 255, as long as you're not flaring, you should be pretty good. But that is a great tip, uh, Marcus. Cool. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's, <laughs> I, I should have called it book light. So when you when you when you fire the two lights lights in, into this is just in case you're wondering if you, if you ever hear me say book light when you're, you're firing the lights into the flats and letting it come back out it's called book, book light so uh thank you so much uh kurt for that that's awesome. So, so this has been super fun. I this is our last live for the for the rest of the year. We'll be back next year with some more cool stuff. We have some more things in the works, uh, some more how to stuff. Uh, Kate will be here. I'll be here. We'll be rocking and rolling. So, we'll have a fantastic season with your friends, your family. I hope you stay. Safe. I hope you have a new year, buddy. Later.